Good morning, YouTubers. Michael Scott, Scotty Man Photo. Hey, I'm uh, I'm uh, at uh, I don't know where I'm at. I'm somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I was kind of waiting on the light this morning. I thought I'd uh, yeah, lights come and gone. Oh yeah. Uh, did I say hit the like button? I don't know. It or didn't. And uh, I forgot. There's something else you're supposed to do. Like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. Yeah. All right. Bye. Anyway, I'll head back, check out my images, and I thought that was a dying duck out there or something. Well, take two. But, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the video sometime. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and get tongue tied. Have some coffee. Coffee makes you sophisticated. Well, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get tongue tied. Hey, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the video, though, but. Uh, Man, I just can't get it. I just can't do it this morning. I'm just not feeling it. But uh, it's never a good, it's never a bad morning when you're a landscape photographer. Oh my goodness. You would not believe what happened with the sky this morning. Pretty much nothing. But anyway, check out the video anyway. YouTubers, Michael Scott, Scotty Man Photo. Hey, I'm here at Eisenhower State Park. It's uh, Lake Texoma, kind of borders Oklahoma and Texas. Thought I'd come down this morning and uh, see what kind of composition I could line up. Uh, I was really trying to uh, capture kind of this uh, boulder foreground with uh, some new spring trees in the background. So I like the colors. Uh, I like the colors uh, coming out. It's good to see spring back, and I'm looking forward to summer. So, uh, but uh, the skies aren't cooperating as I had envisioned. So, uh, you know, I was hoping for, as I usually do, a more colorful sky. So, looks like just clouds, uh, no real color. So, uh, in about a minute, maybe till sunrise, and uh, I really don't think anything's going to happen. So, probably just capture this image uh, more of a as more of a test image, and and uh, see what I think about it when I get back in post processing and decide whether I want to come back and try to shoot it again in, in better skies. So, yeah. Well, looks like uh, sunrise is here, nothing's happening. I give it some more time. You know, I always say it's not over till it's over, but I'll take a minute and kind of walk you through my composition. So, uh, actually I was, and I'll show the image here uh, at the end of the video, but uh, kind of right here, it's kind of lining up the, uh, the these rock boulder interests here in the foreground, kind of leading out to the, uh, uh, to the opposite side of the lake, to the bluffs on the other end. So, yeah, I was hoping, uh, 
you know, get some good color. I, I think the, uh, the lake looks great. Um, you know, just about a right amount of movement to give some, some sense of movement in the image. I really wasn't going for kind of, I, I didn't want the placid look this time. I really wanted some motion in the water, but, uh, but not too much. So, uh, relatively, uh, low to no winds this morning. So that's great. But, uh, this guy just isn't cooperating, but I'll be back. Yeah, I was kind of lining up this composition this morning, made me, made me think about tripods and, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'll do a video um, one day soon and, and talk about several different tripods. I've often thought about that. I, I think it would be a video that would have been nice uh, years back for me to have seen and kind of realized what tripod to start out with uh, or what tripod that you're going to end up with. But I would say above all on tripods, of course, a sturdy tripod is, is key. But uh, the length of a tripod is often underestimated and people tend to go for a tripod that's about, uh, about equivalent for their height. And I think the truth is you need a tripod that's much, much larger than you are. And you can look here in this particular situation, let me back up here a little bit. But yeah, you can, you can kind of see See the, the leg here, the forward leg is extended quite a bit more than the other two. And you know, many times when you're lining up a composition, you know, it's not always on perfect level ground. So, you know, you, you need to have that extra reach in some of those legs to really get that tripod, not only to the height you want, but at the angle that you need to. So I think that's something to keep in mind, definitely. Ball heads are also super important. And this Getzo ball head is just fantastic. With this friction tensioner, um, you know, it allows me to maneuver my camera where I need it to get the shot that I'm, that I'm looking for. And I think, you know, without that, I use that quite a bit actually. So, you know, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be an ideal ball head without it. And, and that's uh, something to consider too. Simple little things like this, this uh, lanyard here for, for my um, uh, cable release. I had shot years back uh, with a similar setup, only I just let the, the cable release dangle from my D800 and uh, I ended up tearing the socket up uh, because I just got snagged on something and something like this can, can really protect your gear too. So, you know, you, you kind of find out these things after years of, of being a photographer and, and using gear and uh, some just little simple things like that really go a long way to help too. You know, this lens, um, and I, I've got this filter attachment on there. Probably some of you might have even been wondering, well, what is that? But uh, basically, that's a Lee filter attachment to uh, put large uh, uh, ND filters on on the camera, and and I just kind of leave it on because it it doesn't really cause me any trouble, and it's not an inconvenience. Doesn't get in in the way when I'm not using it, but when I need to use it, it's handy to already have that attached to the camera. Uh, but that 14 to 24 uh, has been a spectacular lens, and and I do a lot of images uh, similar to this with with foreground and background in landscape photography and I think you know it, it's not always that you want to go extreme wide but it's nice to have the ability to to go 14 millimeters and, and I think that focal length 14 to 24 is about perfect uh, for, for many types of landscape images so it's not it's not that it's a a fantastic lens and it is it's a fantastic lens but it suits my needs it suits what I'm looking for and I didn't know that until I, I was shooting for for many years and thought uh, yeah you know I, I think it's time to really step up uh, and make a purchase on this lens and it's certainly been well worth it some things to consider when you're buying gear it's not you know you can have the best gear in the world and the gear doesn't make the best image in the world um, but it can certainly help you capture it but uh, I think, you know, above all, composition is, is by far the most important aspect to any landscape image. And it looks like I'm getting a little more contrast in that sky. I might try to capture this image and, uh, yeah, give it a few more minutes. I'm definitely going to capture a test image and see what I think about it back in post. And um, I'm sure I'll be back here to try to recapture this with a better sky. But I'll give it a few more minutes. Well, 
that's it. I didn't get the skies I was hoping for, but uh, nevertheless, it's nice to be out this morning. So, uh, hey, I'm going to go ahead and end the video, though. But if you liked it, make sure you like the video. Hit the like button and uh, consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, hit that little bell icon and it will alert you of any future videos I post. And uh, leave me a comment. Let me know your thoughts. And uh, as always, if I don't see you down the road, maybe I'll see you on the trail.